the conclusion to drying green wood. My last video, although titled How to Dry Green Wood, was more of a question, more of an experiment, and hopefully I can now summarise it and tell you my thoughts on how to dry it. First off, I'm just going to summarise the whole thing right now. Don't bother. <laughs> it's, it's just not waste your time. The best way I found, and I've got many comments, I mean, read the comments below the old video and have a look for yourself. A lot of people just say, let it air dry. It takes, I found out, four to six months for the size that I was working with that you saw. Anything bigger may take up to about a year. It's not really a long time. If you collect a whole load of it and put it in storage, and then just go buy dry, kiln dry wood, use that, and then by next year, the stuff you've collected is nice and dry, you collect some more for next year and this stuff will keep you going and you just keep rolling with it. That's probably the best way to do it, I think. And by the sounds of it, a lot of other people think the same way. This is not to say I didn't get results with the microwave method though. Um, definitely did get results, it definitely dries. I mean, I haven't got a, a moisture content meter, but I weighed it. It's lost weight each time, I and mean, obviously you're losing moisture. That is the weight of the wood, so it is working. Um, I had a comment from Martin Connolly. He also gets good results with the microwave method. He said he wraps them in newspaper to prevent drying. I did try wrapping them in plastic bags, putting them on tissue. I, I've heard all these sorts of things. They don't, and they may make a difference, but from my test subjects. They didn't really make any difference. Um, the only thing I would say is where I did lots of them, my microwave did stop working for a while, which is an issue and worrying. So maybe putting it in a bag will stop. It must be the moisture going into the microwave, it must have been what stopped it. So maybe wrapping it up will stop that rather than worrying about whether it prevents more moisture escaping. The biggest thing I noticed was that they were completely random. Some cracked, some didn't. It could be the same amount of time, exact same temperature. It's the nature of wood, I suppose. As I also said in the other video, if, it, if you've got a big log, cut it in half. Cut it in quarters if you can. I know it reduces the size, but that will allow it to shrink down and stop the, the pressures and the tension within the wood pulling against each other and causing those splits down the medullary race. Other methods, a guy called Stephen Hines, he suggests putting it in the oven at 150 degrees. I don't know if that's Celsius or Fahrenheit. But a uh, low temperature in the oven, I can't see why that doesn't work. I'll put it in a microwave because lots of people said it. I assumed maybe it was because it dries it from the inside out, but the oven will still dry it out. The best comments I think I've had, two people said the same thing. Fred, <laughs> Fred Moulton Jr. and Craftsmank. They both, well they are both, um, walking stick carvers and they both suggested making some sort of large plastic bag that covers the whole stick and they carve it, as soon as they cut it down they carve it green and wet then once they stop and they've had enough carving they just wrap it up in a bag and they'll leave it to sit for a while, take it back, unwrap it, carve a bit more and that allows you to uh, work on it while still letting it dry slowly over the, over the course of months. As I said, they were completely random, so even if you air dried them very slowly, you could well end up with checking, cracking, splitting, however you want to call it. Um, so if you want to carve something that long, try and find a stick that's that long, and it just gives you a bit of leeway. If it does split, hopefully it won't reach the part that you really want in the middle. I know it's probably not the news you wanted, you probably wanted to see a fast track way of uh, drying wood, but as far as I can see, as far as I found out, it's it comes with its issues. I mean, you've got to go out your way to find the sticks. That could cost time and petrol money, depends how far you've got to go. Um, you've got to put it in a microwave or an oven, which costs money in electric or gas. Um, if, if you have the same issue as me and your microwave stops working or breaks entirely, you've got to pay for a new microwave. Um, if you're just buying kiln dried, it's a click of a button on the internet, it comes to your door. It might be a, a few quid extra above petrol money, but 
maybe it's worth it. You don't have to wait around, and you have to sit with them, with the uh, sticks whilst they're in the microwave. You can't just leave them. So that's a, it's a lot of time and effort for drying it out, which brings you back to it's better just to let it air dry. It's better just to collect it all, chuck it in the corner, get some wood that you can use for now, and just let that dry by itself and don't worry about that. Um, I've painted a lot of the ends. I think I mentioned this in the last video. Um, it's a common thing to paint it with, I mean I was told acrylic paint, um, you can do it with wax, you can do it with specific stuff solely for sealing ends. I assume that probably works well for air drying but in the microwave it didn't seem to make any difference at all. It might be in the paint that I used rather than using wax but I didn't find any any real difference. On a final note, if you're whittling, which I assume you will be doing if you're looking for sticks to dry, don't I wouldn't even really worry too much about drying them out. I've I very rarely cut them specifically off the tree. I usually find them on the floor and if they're on the floor they've probably been sitting there a while, especially if it's the summer, they would have been dried by the sun. So that's fine. I've carved a few fairly wet sticks and I've never encountered any checking later on or any warping in it. Um, most of the time when you whittle it's for yourself. It's, it's effectively like a doodle a lot of the time or a practice piece. So again it doesn't matter really if it cracks, just get it and carve it and just play about. It doesn't matter. If you're doing it for someone, I'll probably just get kiln dried because then you're safe. You don't want it splitting, if someone's paid you to do it, or if you're doing it as a, a loving gift, you don't want it splitting on them. So I would personally just get kiln dried. Um, another good place I've seen is kindling. Get a big bag of that, a pound or two, and that's all kiln dried, and it's all in nice little whittly sizes that you can use. Did a video on that not long ago. Link. <laughs> and that's it, hopefully you have fun. Careful wear your gloves. Unlike me, I know I very rarely wear gloves and I always cut myself. <laughs> wear gloves. Have fun. Have fun. Wear gloves. Go to the previous video and just check out the comments below. I mean, there's some trolls in there, but mostly it's good content. I think there's a bloke who um, he put a link to a book on specifically on drying. I think it was for turning but it's, it's the same principles will apply. Um, experiment yourself obviously. Comment below if you have any more ideas and, and just obviously not just for me but it's for everyone else but comments and helpful hints and let's just let's just carve some stuff. I know it's not what you wanted to hear but hopefully that's answered some questions for you. I know it's definitely answered the question for me in terms of how long it takes to dry sort of a thickness of branch. I think I would use the microwave method if I definitely wanted a really specific branch. If that, for some reason, that piece of wood meant something to me and I wanted the bark on it and everything else, then maybe yeah, I would use the microwave method for a one-off piece, but definitely not as a means to dry wood.